In this video, we're going to be using Blazor to create this drop down list that supports images. I'm going to be taking you step by step through each of the main styling aspects so that you can change the component the way you want it to be changed. We're going to be keeping this drop down list as simple as possible, but it does at least need to meet the following requirements. It needs to support images. We're going to be doing it all in Blazor, so that means we're not cheating by using any JavaScript. It needs to be reasonably attractive. It needs to float over other content, meaning it cannot displace any other elements in our, on our page. It needs to be scrollable when you get too many items in the list. It needs to look reasonable on multiple browsers. And the Blazor component needs to support two-way binding. Right, so let's jump into Visual Studio and get writing some code. Right, so here we are in Visual Studio. I have the standard Blazor template projects open. We really only have four files of interest here. We have our homepage, which is just going to be using our component. We have our basic image dropdown, which is our Blazor component. It has a attached CSS file, and this is so that we can isolate our CSS styles just to the single component. And we have a basic image drop-down item, and this is going to serve as our model for each item in the drop-down list. So if we have a look at right now how our component looks in its current state, it doesn't work. It's just showing a diff with a placeholder and a list of countries with each of the images. The images are sitting up here in WW root images with a whole bunch of flags. Nothing special there. And we've got a message saying uh, selected you, you selected nothing. This is not part of the component itself. This portion sits in the home page calling the component. Right, so if we look at our Razor syntax, what we have, we've got an image dropdown container, which effectively is the whole area around our dropdown list. We have an image dropdown header which represents this portion here. If an item has been selected, we are going to display the image and the text of the image in this header section. Otherwise, we're going to display the placeholder, which in our case is select country. Then we're gonna show an arrow at the end of the div, which is what we have there. And then we're just going to loop through each of our items in our collection and display them uh, each with an image and the text. I've already set up an on-click event to, for select item when any of the items are clicked, and that just sets the selected item and then raises the on-select event callback. The other parameters that this component has, it has a collection of items, which will be, in our case, the, the countries with their images. We have a parameter for the item that has been selected, and then we have our on event callback. And we have some placeholder text. If we look at our item model, we just have a value, some text, and the URL pointing to the image. If we look in our home page, I just have a method that gets called on parameter set. And all this does is, is populates a list of basic image dropdowns. And it's going to pass that that list of drop-down items through to our component. We're calling item selected whenever the event callback is raised and that sets a selected item, setting the placeholder. And then all we're doing is we're displaying the text of either nothing or the item that was selected, which is the, the, this bit of text that we're seeing down here. Right, so at the moment, we're in a state where the, the, the list of items is continuously being shown. Let's start with that and start building this up and turning it into a real dropdown as we go. So our first step is to turn this into a collapsible list so that when someone clicks the header, we can hide the items or show them as we go. So we're going to introduce a new property called is open. We're only going to display the items in the list if is open is true. We're going to create a click event on the header. So if someone clicks there, we're going to change the state of is open from either true to false. And then if a user selects an item, we want to make sure that we close the list as soon as they've selected it. And we can see our changes applied. Clicking on the header will now toggle the list and I can pick an item in the list as well and it will set the selected item. So that's the core functionality already there. However, I'm not particularly happy with the way it looks. So we're gonna start working on the styling to improve its attractiveness. Right, so if we jump over to our, to our style sheet here, things generally look better when they've got room to breathe. So I'm going to add some padding around our header. 
I'm going to add a new class here that is only going to be applied when someone is selected the our header section and this is going to just add a glow around the edge we're going to give it a border color and we're going to set our box shadow we want this active class to be applied whenever the drop down list is open but in here we're going to do a check that if it's open we will add the active class and that just gives it that blue border that we're seeing around there as soon as it's been clicked now let's work on the items in the actual list. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give this div, div a name so that we can reference it. And we'll give each item in the list a name of image dropdown dash item. And then as well, if it's the current item, we'll make sure it's selected. Nothing's changed yet, but let's add the styles. So, so we're gonna fix our size of our image to be 24 pixels and give a bit of padding to the right. Here we'll give the entire menu a border with some shadow and we'll give some padding to each individual item 10, 10 on the left and 15 pixels on the right we'll change the cursor to be a little hand pointer whenever you're going over it we're going to add a transition so that whenever a user hovers over each item the background color is going to change we do this by adding the item hover attribute and if the item selected, we're going to give it a slightly different gray or background color. We are adding a transition here of the background color for 0.2 seconds. This just adds a really, really tight animation to make, uh, to make the transition between the background colors a bit easier on the eyes. CSS will handle all of this for us. If you can see there, that's pretty faint, the gray on my screen. You, what you can do is if you need to test out that something's working, you can make it a ridiculous color to see the effect uh, very clearly and blatantly. So we'll just put that back. Okay, so already that's looking pretty good. I would like to change this arrow. What we're gonna do is we will perform on our arrow class, which is set to 12 pixels whenever our header class is active we are going to rotate that arrow 180 degrees and that works great that doesn't look very smooth so what we can do is just add a transition to everything for the arrow and give it a 2.0.2 seconds which is fast enough to be seen really smooth but slow enough that people will actually notice so that looks way better I'm going to ignore the pixelated uh, image quality. These would look better if I had better quality images, but that'll have to just do. So that looks pretty good so far. I can see some clipping that's happening at the top of the menu. If, you, if we zoom in here, you can see that this very top item is cutting off one or two pixels, or one pixel probably, of the blue border or the blue highlight that we added so that's one thing we're going to have to address a bit later but for now this content our content is being pushed down every time we are opening the the, the drop down list so you can see our content is being pushed to the bottom so let's go and resolve that so this one's pretty easy we just need to make our menu item our drop our image drop down menu give it uh, absolute positioning and give it a Z index of a thousand so that it sits above anything that's under it. If we do a save and let's see if that's been applied. If we scroll down now, we can actually see that it is hiding the you selected. So that is working just great. I still feel like this list is way too long and we shouldn't be showing this many items to our user unless we particularly wanted that. That's not what I want out of this control, so rather I would only have it show just a few items and then have a scroll bar as soon as the items get too many. So to do this, we need to configure the overflow of the list. A lot of this complexity of this is taken care of for us by the CSS. So once again, in our image menu, what we need to do is we need to set that we want it to automatically handle the overflow in the vertical position and we need to specify the max height. So as soon as the, the menu item gets more than 250 pixels, it's gonna create, uh, gonna create a vertical scroll bar for us automatically. Let's see if this has worked, and there we go. Super simple. While we're here with the drop-down menu, let's take care of that clipping. 
what I want to do is push, make a little margin at the top and push this down by two pixels so that you can see the menu now is pushed down so that we can see the full blue glow around the heading. And these corners look quite rigid. So let's, let's go and add a border radius with a solid outline to make it a bit, but make our drop down list stand out a bit more from the background. And that corn, rounding off the corners just gives it a bit more of a professional look. So this scroll bar for me will appear after 250 pixels. If you decide you want to show less items to you, your users, you just need to fix, change the max height to whatever you like. So while the scroll bar works completely fine, we can make it look a bit nicer on those browsers that run on the WebKit engine. So if we go and specifically point at the scroll bar, we can set its exact width, we can give it a background color, and we can give it a border radius. So that can just make it look that little bit slicker. Let's just quickly check this out on some other browsers to make sure it still looks as good. That seems completely fine on Opera. If we take a look in Firefox, everything else works fine, but it hasn't styled our scroll bar. That is because Firefox doesn't use the WebKit engine. I'm okay with that. Still looks good enough. Last thing we need is to make sure that the, our Blazor component supports two-way binding so that we can set the value already from outside of the component and the component will respond and change its state accordingly. So to test this, I can just set the selected item and I can just pick one at random. Let's just say it's the fourth item in our list. If I go and refresh this, so here it is telling us that we selected India and the reason is is because this is sitting outside of our component so we're not supporting the the two-way binding just yet. So in order to do this we could set our selected item and have that equal to selected item and now this works completely fine if we start off and default load this to I don't know, the sixth item in our list, it will choose Brazil. Or the eighth item in our list, it will choose Sweden. So that works great. So to wrap this up, we want to be able to use Blazor's binding syntax. We want to be able to use at bind dash selected item. This then means that we don't need to call this method to select the selected item. And if we try and build this, it's going to moan. This is because we haven't followed Blazor's naming convention. If you want to support two-way binding to that extent, all we need to do is to change this to be in the naming convention that suits, that follows Blazor's standard. So I'm going to go and change this to our async invoke. Selected item changed. Now if we run this, works great, and now we can change this to be automatically, if we want it to select the third item on load, or the fifth item on load. There we go. The source code is in a link in the description if you want to use it to help yourself. If you enjoyed the video and it helped you, you may want to check out this one next. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you over there.